I'm Mayling Parker, a perinatologist with Minnesota Perinatal Physicians and Alina Health, and I'm here to talk to you today about cerclages. After going through a little bit of background on different types of cerclages and different techniques, we'll move into indications and contraindications for cerclage placement. We'll close with a few common clinical scenarios um, where we'll discuss whether or not cerclage is warranted. So, cerclage can be used to treat both a history of cervical insufficiency and a history of preterm birth. As you all know, cervical insufficiency is painless cervical dilation after the first trimester with expulsion of the pregnancy in the second trimester, typically prior to 24 weeks gestation. This usually occurs without contractions or labor, and there's no other clear cause for the early delivery. It's important to recognize that cervical length is a marker for risk for preterm birth and not cervical insufficiency. There are two main categories of cerclage, a transabdominal cervical cerclage and a transvaginal cervical cerclage. And there are two different types of transvaginal cervical cerclages. The McDonald cerclage is a purse string suture that's placed at the cervicovaginal junction. In contrast, a Sherrod car um, is placed much higher on the cervix and um, can only be placed after bladder and rectum dissection. There are many reviews examining different techniques for cerclage, and what um, investigators have found is that there's really no benefit to any specific suture type, number of sutures placed, or the specific transvaginal cerclage method. All are in agreement that non-resorbable suture should be used. Transabdominal cerclage is reserved for a specific subset of patients, those with anatomical limitations to transvaginal cerclage, such as those with a trachelectomy, or those with prior failed transvaginal cerclage, which has resulted in a second trimester loss. The abdominal cerclage is placed using an open or a laparoscopic approach, and it's typically placed in the preconception period or in the first trimester. It remains in situ until childbearing is completed, and there's really no indication for elective delivery prior to 39 weeks just due to abdominal cerclage placement. The risks of cerclage are small, but include rupture of membranes, chorioamnionitis, cervical lacerations, suture displacement, and very rarely uterine rupture and maternal septicemia. Transabdominal cerclage has a higher risk of hemorrhage as well as the attendant risks of abdominal surgery. In today's talk, we'll go through cerclage terminology, indications for cerclage. We'll review when cerclage is not an appropriate treatment, We'll briefly discuss management after cerclage placement. We'll go through some common scenarios and discuss the few exceptions. A history indicated cerclage has previously been known as a prophylactic cerclage. An ultrasound indicated cerclage was previously known as a therapeutic cerclage. And a physical exam indicated cerclage has previously been known as rescue cerclage. Indications for a history indicated cerclage um, include the following, and it's important to note that um, it's understood that the pregnancy must be a singleton pregnancy at less than 23 to 24 weeks gestation. For a history indicated cerclage, the patient should have a history of one or more second trimester losses related to painless cervical dilation in the absence of preterm labor or placental abruption. They may also have a history of prior cerclage that was placed for painless cervical dilation in the second trimester or alternatively, a history of three or more preterm births prior to 34 weeks gestation. The indication for ultrasound indicated cerclage is demonstration of cervical shortening at less than 25 millimeters prior to 24 weeks in the setting of a prior spontaneous preterm birth before 34 weeks. And the indication for an exam indicated cerclage is painless cervical dilation in the second trimester. Again, it's important to note that all of these are singleton pregnancies at less than 23 to 24 weeks gestation. It has been demonstrated that ultrasound surveillance for short cervix is both safe and effective. Most patients at risk for cervical insufficiency or preterm birth can be safely monitored with serial transvaginal ultrasounds in the second trimester. In fact, this avoids unnecessary history-indicated cerclages in 50% of these patients. And the duration of surveillance is from 16 weeks until 24 weeks gestation. 
Women with a prior spontaneous preterm birth at less than 34 weeks and a cervical length less than 25 millimeters do not meet criteria for cervical insufficiency, but cerclage is associated with an improvement in preterm birth outcomes. Those without a prior preterm birth but a short cervix that's detected at 16 to 24 weeks do not benefit from cerclage placement. So when is cerclage not an appropriate treatment? If a short cervix is incidentally diagnosed in the second trimester in the absence of prior preterm birth, vaginal progesterone is the treatment of choice. We offer vaginal progesterone to women with singleton pregnancies whose cervix is less than 20 millimeters and the pregnancy is less than 24 weeks gestation. Cerclage is also not routinely recommended in twin pregnancies, although we'll come back to this later. And lastly, it's not recommended solely due to a prior leap, cone, or the presence of a malarian anomaly. How are women managed after a cerclage is placed? Further ultrasound surveillance of cervical length after cerclage placement is not warranted. The cerclage is typically removed at 36 to 37 weeks gestation. In those with cerclage and subsequent preterm premature rupture of membranes, either removal or retention of the cerclage is appropriate. However, those with symptoms concerning for preterm labor should have the cerclage removed, as well as those women with symptoms concerning for chorioamnionitis. Now let's go through some common clinical scenarios. This patient is a 25-year-old G2, P0101, who presents at 15 weeks for consultation. Her history is significant for a prior 28-week delivery due to preterm labor. I would offer her weekly 17 OHP from 16 to 30 weeks gestation as well as serial cervical length measurements from 16 weeks to 24 weeks with the understanding that if her cervix shortened to less than 25 millimeters that I would offer her a cerclage. In case number two, this patient is a 27-year-old G3, P1102, at 15 weeks gestation who presents for consultation. She has a history of a prior 28-week delivery due to preterm labor, and in a subsequent pregnancy, had an ultrasound indicated cerclage placed and a term delivery. I would offer this patient weekly 17 OHP from 16 to 36 weeks, as well as serial cervical length monitoring from 16 weeks to 24 weeks. And again, I would place a cerclage if her cervix shortened. In case number three, we have a 30 year old G2 P0101 at 15 weeks who presents for consultation. Her history is significant for a prior 31-week delivery after an exam indicated cerclage at 20 weeks. I would offer this patient a history indicated cerclage with or without weekly progesterone from 16 weeks until 36 weeks. In this case, the patient is a 27-year-old G3, P0020, at 11 weeks, who has a prior history of a first trimester miscarriage with a DNC and a 16-week loss due to painless cervical dilation. I would offer this patient a history-indicated cerclage placed at the end of the first trimester. This patient is a 35-year-old G1, at 20 weeks, who presents for a level two ultrasound, and she is diagnosed with an incidental short cervix measuring 15 millimeters. Funneling is noted, but the external os is closed. I would offer this patient vaginal progesterone. The same patient is diagnosed with an incidental short cervix and vaginal progesterone is offered but declined. She's brought back for an ultrasound one week later to measure her cervix, and now her cervix is dilated to two centimeters with no measurable cervical length on ultrasound. After a thorough discussion of risks and benefits, I would offer this patient a physical exam indicated cerclage. Exceptions. There's emerging data that suggests that perhaps cerclage may be helpful in certain twin gestations. A physical exam indicated cerclage in twin gestations is associated with a decrease in spontaneous preterm birth less than 34 weeks compared to no cerclage. There's also a longer latency period from the diagnosis of dilation to delivery and a concomitant decrease in perinatal mortality. MPP protocols do allow for physical exam indicated cerclages in twins after appropriate counseling. Here are some of the references for some of the newer data.
In conclusion, cerclage may be offered to certain women who meet criteria for cervical insufficiency or who are high risk for preterm birth. We'd be happy to meet with your patients to discuss their clinical history further, and we can be reached at these following numbers. Please feel free to reach out anytime, and thank you so much for listening today.